hey guys welcome to my channel today we're gonna be creating an admin panel dashboard so here is the demo of what we're gonna be creating we have here a sidebar with sidebar menu items and when we click on each item it navigates us to the correct screen based on the sidebar menu item we have selected Alright, so we're going to be creating this using the admin flutter scaffold package and we'll be using our all-time favorite Riverpod as our state management solution. Okay, so we have here a brand new flutter project and as you can see, the default counter is working. But we're going to remove this because we'll be replacing this with an admin panel dashboard. So the first thing we need to do is to add Flutter Admin Scaffold and Riverpad into our parspec.yaml file. So these two packages are now added. Before we can be able to use Riverpad in our app, we need to wrap our main widget with provider scope. like this because the counter app is messy let's remove this and create a home page screen in a separate file Okay, so what we did here is to create a home page stateless widget that returns an admin scaffold from the Flutter admin scaffold package. We gave it an app bar and we gave it a sidebar with an empty items and an empty string in a selected route. And we temporarily gave it a body of an empty container. And if we refresh this, we now have this admin panel with up bar and sidebar. So the next thing we need to do is to define all the navigation labels and icons of our sidebar. Let's define it inside an enumeration. Okay, so what we've done is to define all the enumerations that we need and then we gave it a value of property of type string that represents the label of the navigation button and icon data that holds the icon of each button. Okay, so here in the items, we map the sidebar item that values and each item will return an admin menu item passing the value as the title an icon data and the name as its route and then convert it to a list next let's create a state provider for this sidebar item and give it a default value of dashboard and then we watch this provider inside our widget and in order for this to work let's convert our widget to a consumer widget And then let's assign the selected item name to the selected route. Because here in the admin menu item, we're assigning the sidebar item name to the route. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to update the sidebar item provider with the sidebar item that the user have selected. But the problem is, this provider is of type sidebar item 
and this selected item is of type admin menu item so we cannot assign this item to this provider so how can we solve this so what we need to do is to create a helper method that maps the sidebar item values and return the value that matches the item route so here is our helper method that accepts the selected item that is coming from here and returns a type of sidebar item to match the type of this provider so what we are doing here is we are looping for the values of the sidebar item and for each value we check if the item that route is equal to the value that name and if so we return the value but if no condition was met here we return the sidebar item that dashboard as a default but this cannot be reached if your logic here is correct so this is just a safety net so let's call this inside this update method like this all right so the next thing we need to do is to define all the screens for each button okay we now have created all the screens that we need so the problem now here is how can we return here in the body the correct screen based on the button that the user have selected so instead of defining a selected variable and using a switch case that would make our code base messy let's add a widget property to our enum let's call it body And here in the body, let's assign all the screens for each button. Alright, so here in the body, let's simply assign the sidebar item that body. And if we refresh our app and test it, we can see that it is returning the correct screen based on what we have selected there you go but why is the active background color is not working correctly because if we click on this item the active background color is still on this dashboard button When trying to debug this behavior, what I found out is every time our widget rebuilds, this sidebar widget doesn't rebuild its children internally. That is why it's not updating the active background color. So it's actually a bug from this Splatter admin scaffold package. So the workaround that I've thought about is whenever we rebuild our widget, we need to recreate this sidebar widget. We need to create a new instance of sidebar widget. This way, the sidebar widget will be recreated every time, causing the active background color to be redrawn to the correct sidebar item that was selected. So in order to do that, we need to create a unique key for each rebuild and we'll assign it to this sidebar. This will force this sidebar to create another instance every time this widget gets rebuilt. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's test this. Okay. It's now updating correctly and showing the correct screens as expected. 
Another thing that you might be wondering is how can we pass a parameter if we need to pass a parameter to any of the screen. So let's say we have a string param here and an int param of type integer. So how can we pass these parameters? Because we cannot pass it inside this uh, constructor because there is no way we can pass a parameter inside this enumeration. So how can we do that? So this is where Riverpad shines once again. So what we need to do is to define a param provider. Let's give it a type of uh, string and uh, int. And then let's throw an unimplemented error. And here in the body, let's wrap this sidebar item with provider scope. And override this param provider to the value of these parameters that we need of us. And then in the screen where we need the parameter, we need to convert it into a consumer widget. And then watch the param provider inside the build method. And then we display the parameter to make sure it's working. Okay, so let's start our app and try it. Alright, as you can see, it is showing the parameter that we have passed. So which means it's working as expected. So that's pretty much it. I hope this helps. And uh, thank you for watching.